everyone. Welcome again to the Philip Sadiq Show. Special guest, see the book? House Advantage. The film 21, you might have remembered that. Jeffrey Ma, he's here to talk about the new book that he's put out. So we're going to get right back to that. How's it going? How's it going, Jeffrey? It's going very well. Thanks for having me. Oh, we're glad you're here, man. So tell us a little bit about, just about a minute about the sure. film 21, and then we'll get into the book. Sure. So 21, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with it, about the MIT Blackjack students, uh, Blackjack team, mm -hmm. went to Vegas. Over the course of seven years, we won about $5 million. They made a movie about it. It was number one in the box office two weeks in a row. It was based on a book called Bringing Down the House which was a New York Times bestseller for over a year. And that entire story was based on my life. Mm -hmm. uh, the movie's excellent from what I've been told. My camera guy, Will, say hi, man. Hey. He saw it, it's an excellent film, excellent film, but he's here to speak about the new book and about what he learned and applied to business. So tell us a little bit about the book now. Yeah, so basically what I realized over time was that a lot of the lessons that we learned at the blackjack table could be applicable to people in their businesses or in their lives, how we made decisions, unemotional decisions, it all had a lot of parallels. So I decided to write a book and I guess other people thought it was an interesting story too because I sold it to a publisher and you know I have been working on it and it came out uh, a couple weeks ago okay can you give us let's say three techniques on let's say I'm looking to hire someone for my business sure what techniques could I use to make well, sure I mean, we the first thing I think is to really focus on the past so in other words what traits do you, are you looking for that have been you know successful people that you have hired before, what traits have they displayed? That might be the first thing. The second thing is to try to get as much data as you can about the person. So not just the interview, but then also going and, and doing as much as you can in terms of reference checking and whatnot. The final thing would be to try to make as, you know, a, as unemotional and as a systematic decision as possible. So let's say that for some reason you think you really like them, but you need to figure out why you like them, right? Like, what is it about them that you like? And, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of people that believe in sort of like this instinctive or intuition that you have. Yes. And a, a lot of people do have that, and that's great. But the reality is you're better off trying to figure out how you made the decisions in the first place or how you came to the decision in the first place. And that way you can repeat the decision in the future. Okay. Now, how did you keep your emotions in check when you were doing, you know, the, the 21? Uh, it's not easy because, you know, blackjack and, and being in a casino, it's a very emotional thing. You know, there was a time, actually, in the first chapter, I describe it where I lost $100,000 playing two hands of blackjack. And the ability to sort of bounce back from that is difficult, you know, but it's very important to being successful, with, whether it's in anything you do, because you're going to have setbacks. And your ability to sort of bounce back from those setbacks and believe in yourself and believe in your system is sort of what separates probably the winners from the losers. Mm -hmm. Now, specifically, can you just tell us, like, specifically, what did you do? If you break it down into steps, when you lost the money, how did you recover? Well, for me, you know, first of all, I, I felt like I'd gotten kicked in the stomach. I went up to my room at the, you know, at Caesar's Palace where I was staying. I collapsed on the floor, and then I, I gave myself a pep talk, and I really examined what I had done. Had I made bad decisions that led to that bad outcome, or had I just gotten unlucky? And what I found is that my decisions, all of my decisions, were right on. And what happened is they just, you know, it's like, it's like if you make a decision tomorrow that you decide you want to drive home from work, right? right. And that's something you have to do, right? Yes. You can, if you walked, it would take you hours, mm -hmm. right? So you have to drive, but you get into an accident on the way home. Was that a bad decision? Hmm. No, but it was a bad outcome. Certainly it was a right. fine decision. So there are bad, there are good decisions that lead to bad outcomes. And in this case, my decisions were all sound. So I thought, hey, you know, I need to keep going with it. Mm -hmm. Ambient sound, sound of the train, but that's okay. <laughs> Natural. Yeah. Now, um, if people would like to contact you before sure. we wrap this up, we definitely want to give out. Yeah, yeah, no, I, you can Twitter me at Jeff Ma, and then on Facebook, a good way is um, facebook.com slash Jeff Kevin Ma. Kevin's my middle name, and Kevin was also the name of the protagonist in the book. That's how they got it. And then uh, I also have a blog. It's called the House Advantage, or houseadvantageblog.com. Wow. Now, what does that talk about, the blog? The blog is mostly just talks about some of the, you know, I, I do a lot of writing for different, you know, I write for Huffington Post and write for a different, bunch of different sports sites. And it basically just takes a lot of these concepts of the house advantage and let's sort of what we did in Blackjack and expands them into other areas. I mean, my big area that I love is sports. So it tends to focus a lot on sports. Good. Now, how can what you teach in the book be applied to sports? 
Well, we work actually with a bunch of teams uh, to help them use statistics and data to make better decisions. So with the Portland Trailblazers, we actually look at the stats that players have in college and help the Trailblazers understand which ones have the greatest chance for success in the NBA based on those stats. We also work with the San Francisco 49ers, mm -hmm. and we've done it for the last couple of years on their in-game decisions, helping them to evaluate when to take challenges and, and when to take timeouts and when to go for it. And that's all using past data and statistics to make those decisions. Okay, now I'm a Raider fan, as all of you know. So what would you have done with Jamarcus Russell? Oh, I would never have picked him in the first place. There's not a lot of data and information that would make you think that he was going to be good. I mean, there were too many. For me, like, I just never understood why they took him, to be honest. The house advantage from his lips to God's ears, you guys. <laughs> Jeffrey, thanks a lot for being on the show, my friend. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank yep. you.